Hey friends, and welcome to the second episode of Game Audio Sessions, where we'll be covering more Wise Basics. Today we'll be looking at the sound property editor in depth, as well as some more of the events and how they work. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. And let's go. Events can be found in the Events tab of the Project Explorer when you click here. There's a little folder called Events with a default work unit inside of it. In here, we can then create a new event and name it. And then this is where we drag our sounds in. However, going back and forth is a little bit tedious. So instead, the first thing we're going to do before we start is we're going to create a second Project Explorer. So we can have two of these here and that will make it a lot easier swapping between them. So we can do this either by pressing Shift E and then assigning a new Project Explorer sync group up here. You can see this is number one, so we can assign this to two or three. Or we can go to Views, Project Explorer, and then Sync Group number two. And now we can simply drag and drop this in here. Now you have the audio files here and the events here, so you can easily drag and drop the files into your events. But essentially events, what they are, so I can create a new one here, again, clicking the event tab, and then we have a, we are in the default work unit, so I can just cre press create new event. And I'm just gonna call this play underscore sci-fi gun. And I'm just gonna make sure that this is spelt the same way. And so now we have a play event. And this event is a container that houses the, the actual files inside of it. So we have the sci-fi gun that we can drag and drop in here. And the really cool thing about this is that now we can say, okay, if this is playing, then it will play this. We can then also put multiple sounds in these events. So if I create a second sound and I'm just gonna uh, get something in here from Soundly and I'm gonna call this um, explosion. In fact, I'm gonna call this sci-fi explosion. And I have Soundly open next to me here. And I can basically just go and have the um, sci-fi explosion here. There we go. Essentially, my play container then, if I press on this event, I can drag and drop these events in here. And so I can drop a second, second event in here. So now I have my gun and my explosion. But let's just listen to this. Cool. And then when I bring in the explosion, So the explosion sound is slightly delayed. We can change this in here in the property editor. So it's a bunch of different ones, of course. So I just want to select a single one here and fade the duration. And I do this and then I can save. And I just do this by literally clicking on the sound and then double clicking in here, which allows you to edit it. Um, you can also change the volume on here, the makeup gain, but you can also change the volume on here, of course. So now these happen at the same time. What if we want to stagger it slightly and we have we want to have it a little bit delayed? Well, what we can do here is we can essentially press on the explosion sound and then we have a bunch of different properties again here. And so this is your event property editor. And the inclusion basically means, just to quickly cover it, that um, this sound will actually be in the game when we kind of build the sound bank. So I can tick this on and off either here or here. And then the type is play. We have a bunch of different things here that we can do, which we'll cover later. The target is of course the sound. So what sound should it play? And then the scope, this basically is something that we'll also cover later. And then here, delay. So we can basically say, okay, I want the sound to be delayed by um, one second. We could also then randomize this, but basically now, so you can hear that it's a pretty long delay. We can make this as ever long or short we want, and we can also randomize it here. So if we click this little button, I can say the minimum delay is um, 0.5 seconds. Oops. Oh, sorry, minus, minus 0.5 seconds. And then the maximum is maybe two seconds. So now it will randomly select anywhere between this. 
And if I drag this delay up here, it will basically go minus uh, 0.5 from 1 or plus 2 from 1. So we can then basically randomize this entire parameter. So if we try and do it now. There we go. Then the probability is basically um, how high the chance of this is getting played. And of course, we want it to play each time. So we have it on 100. And then you can also select the fade time. So if we just turn this off again, and then we want it to fade in over two seconds. So you can hear now that it's slowly fading in. And we can change the curve of this as well, which is really, really useful. The other thing that we can do here is um, we can make things stop. So this is really, really important because when you play something in a game, you'll also have to make sure that you want to then um, stop it later because otherwise it will just continue playing forever um, unless it's like a just a one shot sound. But if it's a loop, for example, you want the loop to stop. So we can then create a second sound here. In fact, I'm just gonna um, create a new one. And then we can say stop underscore sci-fi gun. So this would then, we can then drag in our gun and explosion again. And here we can say now we want to stop them. And so now if we are playing these, um, if say something else happens in the game, or we press the pause menu, for example, we could then say, okay, we want to stop these again. So that will be an example of using play and stop events. There's also a bunch of different things that we can do here. Um, a lot of them we will check out later, but a lot of them are reasonably straightforward, like pause um, and like changing the voice volume. So we can set the voice volume, for example, to a certain amount here. Um, but yeah, we'll get into those at a later time. Now that we have our play and stop events, let's look at the sound property editor. So this right here is, again, a place where we can do lots of different things to the sounds. So we have a bunch of different tabs. This looks really overwhelming at the start, but don't worry, you won't be using a lot of these anyway most of the time. and as you go along kind of doing um, more and more sound design stuff and, and implementation, you'll start to get to know these things better. But yeah, so let's start at the top. So the first thing we have here is the name of this. So this correlates to this right here. So we can change the name here to just explosion. And then we can see here, it changes both here and here. If there is a little star here, that means that something isn't saved. So we want to then save it, of course, and we can do this by pressing Control S or save in here. But Control S is, of course, the quick way to do it. So then here, you can assign a color, which is really good for organization. So I'm going to assign this green. And this is the mute and solo. Um, so these are useful, especially when we are um, doing live monitoring. So what that means is essentially what we can do during our um, wise uh, sorry during our play testing when we're making the game we can we can connect wise via this little window and um this is something we'll go through in a, in a future lesson and then we can basically solo and mute sounds so you can similar to when you're writing music you just want to hear the kick or the snare we can do that so we just want to hear the explosion and want to make sure okay i want to adjust the volume so it fits in the mix um, this is again the inclusion. This is the same thing to what we saw in the event. So whether it will be um, in the sound bank or not, which means whether it will end up in the game. And then these are the references. So, so this is really useful if you're not sure if you've got a sound, but you're not sure like, is this being used anywhere? You can check here and it'll open the reference view and then it'll show you exactly which events we are using it in. And this is really, really important because sometimes if you have tons of different sounds and you might think, oh, this is not being used, so I might as well delete it. Well, make sure to check the references before and then you can see exactly what's happening and where it is. The last thing up here is notes. So here you can say this is a sci-fi explosion. It will be implemented um, in the sci-fi 
underscore bomb blueprint um, or something like that. So we can just have notes and it's really great. So if, if you're sharing the session with other people, then they can go in and they can see, aha, uh -huh, what is this doing? This is doing this. So you can kind of like leave no notes for yourself or notes for your colleagues, which is really useful. So then one row down from here, what we have is a bunch of these different tabs. So this is how you navigate between the different settings um, in this. But where we'll be spending the most time is in the in the general settings and then also the positioning and RTPC. Those are the big ones for now. But yeah, so there's the the voice here. And so voice basically wise um, says kind of that each of these things. So these sounds are it calls it them voices instead of sounds. And then we have again, like the sound effects container, which houses these voices. But this basically means just like the sound. So this is the volume of the sound. And then we can bring it up or down. But there's a couple of different places we can change the volume here. So we can change the volume um, either in the sound property editor of the voice. We can also change it on the actual sound in here via the makeup gain. And we can also change it in the makeup gain in here. And as you can see, these don't affect each other. But I would always recommend to you know, it, before you go plus 12 on here, maybe it might make sense to bring this up a little bit because you can see that you can go all the way up to minus 96 and plus and minus 96, which is quite loud. <laughs> so make sure to not have this up all the way and then play the sound and deafen yourself. So here we can also put in the numbers um, so you can work really accurately. You can type these in, which is really nice. And then this little thing right here is rand is called the randomizer. And so what this does again is uh, you saw this before already. If we click on it, we can bring up this little window, which allows us when we press enable to randomize the parameter that we're working with. So in this case, we are we have the volume at zero. And then the minimum offset. So again, how much will it go down from that? and then the maximum how much up. So if we if I say minus five, and plus 10, then it will randomly go from to here, between this, and all the way up to here. So it will every time I play the sound, it will go somewhere between these. And if I move this down a little bit, then it will start from here. So minus five from minus eight, obviously down, and then the same back up. So I can just enable and disable this. And then we we have the same. So these on the side I'll cover later, but right underneath we have pitch. So this changes the pitch, of course, of the sound. And I can demonstrate this here. So we can really change the pitch drastically. And again, we can randomize it, which is really cool. And we can test that here. So if I want to put it at minus 500 and plus 500, which is pretty drastic every time we play it. So this is really useful if you're working with, you know, gunshots or footsteps or anything like that. And you want to make sure that um, that they don't sound all the same because if I if I have this off it will sound the same each time if I have this on and maybe I also have some volume automation and stuff I can bring a little bit more variety into it and this is really useful for us so then the next part of this is low pass and high pass filter again very self-explanatory Same with high pass. This is really, really useful, especially when you quickly need to make space in a mix for, for something. So if I have an explosion and a gun 
and I say, okay, these are happening the same time because they're maybe in the same event, then I want the explosion to have less low end uh, and maybe the gun, uh, whoops, the gun here to have less high end. Um, I can then just do this. Perfect. So, the last thing, of course, is the makeup gain, which we've already covered, which is just volume. So next up, we have the output bus. We can route this to different buses. And a bus is essentially where we can bring our sounds together. So for example, if I have a lot of... So I'm just going to copy paste some stuff. And if I say, uh, yeah, we have different guns and then here we have some Foley and here we have some ambience, we could basically have a couple of different um, buses here, which I can make over here if I, these are all in the master mixer hierarchy. And so I can press um, create new audio bus and then I could say this is our combat bus and then we have another one called Foley Bus and another one called uh, Environment Bus. And so here we can then say, okay, we want our ambience to be routed to the Environment Bus, our explosions and guns to the Combat Bus and our Foley to reroute it to the Foley Bus. And so the, the big thing that, that buses give you is it gives you control over a bunch of different assets. And so this is similar to when you're doing some music and you're you're mixing a song, you can then have um, essentially, you know, your your drums, so your kick and your snare and your cymbals all routed to one bus and then you and that bus is called drum kit and then you can basically lower and raise the volume of the entire drum kit with one fader. And so that's the exact same here. So we can basically change this here where I can say I want this to go into the environment bus because it's the ambience and the explosion into the combat, the foley into the um, foley bus and then the guns here into the combat bus once again. And now I can say, okay, I want the entire bus to be quieter um, or I want the entire bus to be pitched up or maybe we are opening the menu, right? So if we open our uh, user interface menu, we can then say, okay, we want all the combat sounds to be low passed that they're like more muffled so that we make space for the UI and maybe then we can do the same with the music and the environment or something like that. So these basically give you control over a bunch of different uh, sound effects. So this is where you route them. And then again, these are more controls for, for this bus. Um, here we have game defined auxiliary sense and I won't go too much into this because this is a bit uh, higher level but essentially an auxiliary send functions very similar to a bus except in a bus we send the entire signal to the bus. For an auxiliary send we only send part of the signal to the aux send and we can create them in here as well. So we could say this is our cave reverb and then what we can do is if you're in the cave and there's an explosion or rather maybe a gunshot, we can then say, okay, we want to route um, this to the cave reverb so that when we are in the cave, your the, the cave reverb then gets activated and then we have this, um, the, the, the signal of the gun along with the reverb on here, for example. So this is really, really useful for things like that, where we want to have lots of different sounds that we pass through the same effect. And so rather than having an effect on every single sound, we can just have the effect, the reverb, for example, on the auxiliary um, bus. And so again, this is the same principle as with music. So if we have our drum kit and our vocals, and we actually want the same reverb both on the vocals and on the drum kit, we can send part of the signal of both the vocals and the drum kit to the um, reverb auxiliary bus. And then we can basically just change the reverb on the auxiliary bus rather than 
on every single instrument, or rather on every sim single drum and cymbal of the drum kit, and on all of the vocals, so the ad-libs and the backing vocals and the lead vocal and all of that. So this really just allows us to, to kind of have um, a part of the signal split off to, to send to effects. And again, you can send um, you can choose how much volume you want to send to this effect. So if I only want to send a teeny bit, of, um, then I'll put it very low. If I want to send a lot of it, I'll put it high. Um, and then the early reflections will just leave this out because this is a bit more advanced, but it deals with auxiliary buses as well. Then the next thing we have is essentially the initial delay. And what this does is it actually just delays the sound by a little bit. So if we want, if we have this gun, and we'll just remove the low pass filter. So what I can do here is I can say, okay, I want this to be delayed by um, one second. And you can see here, this little thing lights up and it tells us, it says delay when we hover over it. So this tells us, it's waiting for the sound to be played. If we put this down to zero, it doesn't have anything. So this is actually really useful, um, which I'll come to later with just the transport window, but essentially these little icons tell us kind of like what's happening at the moment. So if a sound is mute, if we're setting the volume, the pitch, the low pass, things like that, or if it's waiting for the delay. And then again, you can, you can press the sound and then press spacebar to play it, or you can press it on here. And then of course you can see in the meter if it's playing or not. Then the next thing is loop. So if you want to loop, so let's say we take this and make a very, very, so we have some machine gun stuff here, I think. Um, and I'm just going to cut this here. Hopefully this works. And now I'm going to save this. Perfect. So now you can hear it cuts off. What I can do is I can now loop it and then it will keep playing and it will keep playing until we tell it to stop. And again, this is where stop events are super important. So let's try this out so we can have a um, play machine gun and then we're going to have a stop machine gun. And now I'm going to select this, drag it in and then also select the stop, drag it in here, and now I want to select stop. And now, um, for this to work, I have to go to the soundcaster actually quickly, because um, if I stop playing this and switch, then it will automatically stop, so we won't really prove our point. And we'll go over the soundcaster another time, but what we can do in this, it just basically allows us to drag in events here, and then we can actually test our um, uh, our sounds if they are working or not. So here, let's see. So you can hear that now when I press stop, it will stop it. And this is super cool. But what we can do as well is, obviously there's no tail now, so it just cuts off. So that doesn't sound great. So we maybe want to add a tail. So I'm just going to delete these again here so that we have a bit of clarity. And I'm going to call this machine gun. Um, machine gun loop. And so now I'm going to copy this and paste it. And you can do this by control C, control V, or of course, the classic uh, copy and paste right click. And here I'm going to say, this is the tail. So what I want to do now in this, I'm going to go back to my um, content editor when I click on this and double click, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to cut the tail. So I'm going to use this and I'll cut it here so that when we press stop, it will just play this little tail. I'm going to fade it out a little bit as well. Perfect. Now I'm going to save it. And then when I press stop machine gun, I also now want this event to play. So as you can see, we can have things stop and others play. And this is really, really useful because then we, we can have our machine gun that has a loop. And then when we press stop, 
we can stop it again. So let's test that out. Okay, so we have a little bit of an issue here. And the issue is that we are now, because I copy pasted this, we have loop enabled. <laughs> so of course this is looping as well. And as I just told you, it won't stop until we tell it to stop. So we have to turn off the loop. And this is a little bit dangerous when copy pasting stuff. So you just need to make sure to double check these settings. So let's try this again. Perfect. Of course, the sound is a little bit weirdly cut off here. So if we just move this there, that might sound a little bit better. Whoops. There we go. And yeah, we can add a bunch of different sounds here. So we can do the same when we say reloading or something and we can have the machine gun. If, if it runs out of bullets, we can then have stop. And then if we have the reload animation immediately, we could then also play that for example. So there's a lot of different things what we can do here, which is really cool. So events, again, they're containers that can have different sounds in them and we can tell them to do things. So this is like a little bit of like uh, our manager telling our workers, you have to do this, you have to stop doing this, you have to go here, you have to set this, all of that stuff. Then the last thing in the general settings tab is the stream. So this is a little bit more complicated and I won't go too much into this, but essentially it allows us to, to tell the sound to stream, which takes up a little bit less memory and this is useful for ambiences and stuff like that. But this is a little bit more advanced and you won't need to, to worry about it or deal with it right now. So don't worry about it. This is something that you'll, that you can read up in the documentation. We'll go over it later as well and you'll learn. Um, so yeah, that is, that is the basic um, general settings tab. Um, the next part here are the conversion settings. These are very simple and straightforward here. What that means is we can basically export um, sounds in, in different files, right? So we have um, WAV files and MP3 and AUG Vorbis and all of that. So this is similar here. If we import the sound, we can have different um, conversion settings. So we, we can make a new conversion setting here called conversion AUG Vorbis. And then here we can edit it and basically say, what do we want to do with this? So we can basically say, okay, we want to change the sample rate. We want to have a minimum sample rate and um, maximum sample rate. We can also change the format. And in this case, a lot of games use Og Vorbis. Uh, and so PCM is like wave kind of, and then here we can say, okay, how, how high do you, to what do we want the quality to be? And there's also advanced settings with bitrate and everything. But again, you don't have to worry about this too much. This is mainly the use of this is when we're working on different platforms, for example, mobile and PlayStation and switch. Sometimes the memory capabilities of the platforms are different. Like a phone won't have the same <laughs> CPU and memory as a PS5, right? So some we might have to say okay when we when we import uh, when we convert our sounds uh, for the mobile version we have to really crunch them down and we have to make them a little bit less good quality to save um, the memory so we can all do that in here and then we can basically press convert and then that will do it which is really cool we can also have share sets so we what that means is essentially we can create a conversion setting for lots of different files. And, um, and then we can just simply put that in here so that we don't have to create a new one each time. Um, loudness normalization is essentially just that it normalizes it. Um, but yeah, it just kind of brings up the peak. So it's the file is a little bit louder. Um, but yeah, that's also something that you don't really have to worry about too much. What I wanted to go into here, though, is that there's these little ticks here, override parent. And if I create a new actor mixer and just call this um, guns, and I'm going to put my machine gun in here, then now we all of a sudden have a parent and children. And you can see here, this is grayed out, but here it isn't grayed out. 
and these things are grayed out. So what does that mean? Well, parent and children um, are basically the folder hierarchy of, of these. So you can essentially create new, um, for example, a random container here, and then that will be also the child of, of this. And if I put these in the random container, then those will be the children of this, and this will be the parent. And then this is the child of this parent. So we create a little hierarchy here. And what that means is that if we set something, if we put this to minus 16 in volume, then that will also affect everything that is underneath it, unless we want to override the parent. But we cannot do that for the volume. We can only do that for certain parameters like the bus and here the auxins and stuff like that. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, the gun bus goes to the guns, but maybe we have a or a combat bus, but maybe we have a separate bus called um, machine gun. And you know what? We can also have this as a parent, uh, as a child of the combat bus. So similar to the guns, we have the machine gun, and then we have the combat bus, and specifically the machine gun. So if I had a bunch of different sounds in here, um, then I could all control the the machine gun through one fader. Again, this is super useful, especially if I have a separate gun. So if I if I just do this machine gun and I put these in here, and then for example we have here uh, a sniper rifle and whoops rifle. That's how you spell it. And then I could do the same here. I could have a sniper rifle audio bus. So then what we can do with these is we can say override the parent, which will then not bring it into here, but rather into the one we want. And we can then select machine gun bus. I can do the same here and say machine gun bus. And then we could do the same for the sniper rifle. So they're, they're now routed to this bus and we can say the guns we want them to be routed to the combat bus. And yeah, so that's basically what the override parent does. So it literally says, it's like the child saying, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> and I'm going to do my own thing. And so that's, that's how you can maybe remember it. The child wanting to do its own thing separate to the parents. So that's the same with the conversion settings. If we want to have different conversion settings for this, and different conversion settings for here. I can make a new one here called um, machine gun conversion. Um, and then I could use this. And it's good etiquette to always have the underscores. I realized I didn't do that now, but generally you want to have underscores instead of spaces. Then we have effects here, which are the same as with when we have music and we want to put some reverb on something, some tremolo some a phaser or something like that. And we can do this in here. And again, we'll need to override the parent because we could set them all on here and then they'll affect all of the guns, but we want to set it specifically on this machine gun loop. So I'm going to say override parent. And now I have tons of these different effects. So I have compressors and I have a bunch of different presets here. So you can either load in these presets for each of them, or you can do default. So in this case, I'm going to use a flanger and I'm just going to go flanging uh, deep. And now you can see what that does. I can also scroll through the presets, as you can see here or here. And then what I can do here is basically the share set and modes. Again, share sets means we're using um, essentially something that goes across all of the different effects and custom is something where I can then say, okay, I'm going to edit this. And if I edit it, it'll be unique to specifically this effect. So if I put the same effect then on something else, um, like if I copy this now and I put share set, then it will use, you can see here the settings change. So if I have my custom now, I can change it to 32. And then as soon as I press share set, it'll go back to the default. 
So basically, if I, I can import a preset, which is really cool, and then I can just say I want to customize it, and then I can press the three buttons to edit it, and then we, can, we get our little kind of window in here where we can do stuff. And we can also, within this, set the RTPCs and states, but I'll go over this afterwards. So, um, yeah, we can also then render this effect out. What that does is essentially, instead of using CPU power to process it while the game is running, we can basically say, okay, we're going to render this, and then um, it will pre-render the effect onto the sounds that it's already on, so onto this machine gun, and then it would basically... Um, use less um, processing power while the game is playing. We can also bypass it, which means that we're not using it. So as you can see... We can bypass it here. And then you can obviously put different effects on top of each other, and you can create a new one or use these presets. Next up, we have um, positioning, and this is all about where the sound is within the 3D world. So sounds by default are 2D. Best way to explain this is that when we put sounds into games, we're populating the game world with little speakers that then play us sounds. But those are the 3D sounds. The 2D sounds are as if we're putting on headphones. We can hear the, the sound won't change when we turn our heads. But when we have a speaker in front of us that's playing music, if I turn my head or walk away from it, it'll get quieter and the sound will change. But if I'm wearing earphones, then the sound won't change no matter where I walk, right? Because they're kind of with me. And so that's that's a little bit more the, the 2Ds. But the thing here is, is that we can basically tell it to, to be a, a 3D or a 2D sound by using this um, spatialization. So here, um, the center, basically, these are, we don't, we're not going to go through this too much, um, but essentially you can usually also see down here um, a little bit of um, kind of help for whatever you're clicking on usually. Sometimes it's, yeah, so 3D spatialization. We can then, you can then read through what it says on here and of course also use the documentation for help. But um, yeah, there's kind of different settings on here which we won't go too much into. The main thing is that you have the listener relative routing on if you want it, the sound to be 3D and spatialized. So let's say a fire within the game world that we're walking towards and away from then we would say we want it to be a position. And position um, means that then it's positioned in the 3D world um, and that you can go and walk towards it and then it'll get louder and walk away and stuff like that. So the spatialization mix kind of means how much uh, 3D versus 2D it is. And then the attenuation this basically means where well, we can create a new attenuation share set here and we can then edit it. And what this does is essentially if we are really close to the sound, then we can kind of, you know, hear it as, as it would be. But when we walk away, we want to simulate that. And so we have a distance parameter here. And as we walk away, we want it to get quieter. Maybe we want it to be a little bit more muffled and low passed, and we can do that in here in our attenuation settings. So you can see a bunch of different properties here that you can edit. So here's the volume, um, which we can edit, and we can change also our distance. So if you want it to, if 100 meters isn't that far, we can change it to 1,000, and then we can say, okay, we want this to be uh, go down really fast, but then we want it to be heard for a pretty long time until then here we don't hear it anymore at 800 or something like that. And then we could say similar for low pass here. I can, I can, um, so the, the aux sends here, which we'll not go into too much, but basically that sends, um, defines how much it sends to an auxiliary bus. Low pass filter is very straightforward. So what you have to do here is you press custom and then you create a new one. And then basically that means that when we walk away from the object here, again, the distance, 
it will low pass our sound more. And so we can hear that here. And you can see here that with the cone where we are at, so how close or far. So if this is the, this is really far away and then we can close it. So we can do the same with the high pass and spread. And spread is something interesting. So this basically means if we have a stereo sound, the spread basically defines how much of the, basically, um, the, the closer we get, the higher the spread, the more stereo the sound will be. So it will be more 2D, so to speak. And so this is really useful when we have things like huge machinery in a game and we want that when the player is really close, we want to be really immersed and enveloped by that huge machinery. So we want the 2D loop to play and then we want the spread to be really, really big so that then we are like immersed in it. But then when we walk away, we want it to be more directional. And of course, then we kind of fold the sound back into mono and that happens with spread. So I can demonstrate it here, I hope. Um, depending on how, I'm just gonna reset all of these. And we are going to just try this. Yeah, right, this doesn't work <laughs> properly <laughs> on here. Um, but yeah, you can definitely find some examples of this on YouTube. But yeah, um, you don't have to worry too much about this and we won't go over the focus for now. So the that is pretty much the positioning. Again, you can use the mode custom or share sets. So what is useful here is we is we can say, we can create a new share set and we can call this um, guns. And then we can say all of the guns. So the tail as well, we can say, okay, we're gonna use the guns share set. And then that will be exactly the same here. So that when I change this in here and I go over here and edit it, it will be the same as you can see. So it will swap exactly over. However, now if I say custom, now it says custom, I can change the tail attenuation and if I go to the loop um, and edit this, you can see that it's different. So if I go back to share set, so I, I can see here, if I go back to share set, we're using the same one again. So this is useful if you have a certain gun, which is like maybe way too loud and doesn't quite fit in the other guns, we can then say, okay, we wanna change the attenuation just for this one but I'm gonna go off of the one that I've already created. And then that is pretty easy to do with this. And the last thing is the 3D position automation. And I basically messed up in the video slightly before um, with explaining it. So I am just re-recording this. And essentially what this allows us to do is it, we can add some automation to the panning position of the sound. So if this was a bullet drop um, instead of a machine gun tail. So I'm just gonna rename this bullet drop, even though it isn't, but let's imagine that. We can now basically say, if we select the, whoops, if we select the emitter with automation and open the automation, we can now create a path for the bullet that drops to go. And so what that allows us to do, essentially it's, if we have, if we imagine that this is the shotgun. And so now I can say, okay, the bullet um, drops down here. And then afterwards it bounces a couple of times and goes over here. And so what I can do here now is I can say, right, I want to automate this a little bit so that we have a little bit of a random left and right movement. So I'm gonna do this as, 15 and this is a percent, whoops, 15. And also some in the front and the back, I don't want up and down. So now I can create a couple of these paths 
and just have them be a little bit different from each other. And now we have basically three different paths that play. And they have a little bit of randomization on it. So each time the bullet falls, it will go ding, 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 ding. And sound like it will go over to the, from the kind of center to the right hand side. We can also then basically, if this is a really short sound, we can configure the timeline here and say, okay, this is, this sound actually only lasts for two seconds. So we can adjust that here. And we can then also say, okay, we want to move these on the timeline. So if we put the linear mode off, I can now say this is going to happen earlier. So ding, 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 ding. And this is going to happen later. So that's way we can like determine as well when those uh, direction changes happen, essentially. And yeah, um, essentially, if we have the automation from the emitter, it will basically... Um, the panning will happen from the emitter position versus or relative to the emitter position versus relative to the listener. So it's a really, really useful tool to have in our box. Then really the last thing that's super important here, which we're going to cover, um, we're going to cover states as well, but is RTPCs. So RTPCs are called real time parameter controls. And what they do is they allow you to automate things. So we can select this arrow here and I'm just going to do it on my loop and then we can select the volume. And now what we can do here is now we've got the volume selected. So we want to automate the volume. This you have to think of it again as the same when you're making music and you've got drums or something and you want to say, okay, I want to make the drums quieter um, when the um, violins are playing or vice versa. We want to, we want to duck down the violins when we have the kick playing. So then we could have basically parameters here like volume and then change it by something else. And in this case, we can change it through a bunch of different things. Um, game parameters, which is things that are directly coming from the game. So let's say a health bar, um, or we can do it through MIDI, which of course you can do music stuff with this, an LFO, which is obviously does like um, low frequency oscillator, which will just oscillate it. We can have envelopes um, and we can do it through time. So the real interesting thing here for us is um, game parameters. And so we can set up a new one and we'll just go with our health bar example. So let's say we have, this is our health bar and now we can basically control the volume through this. So if we have then by doing this, we create a new RTPC and these can be found within the um, game syncs in the game parameters tab. And they will be in here. And if you click on it, you can see it has a range minimum and maximum and default. And so what we want is we want our default to be at 100 because we are saying health bar. So uh, HP 100 hit points is the ma max amount of health. And you want to start with that, right? And then the minimum is zero. And um, then what we can do is we go back to our sound and then we can say, okay, so when this when the health is zero, we don't want to hear our machine gun anymore, or maybe we want to hear it really quietly and we want to hear a heartbeat instead. And so now I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to say, okay, we, this happens at when we're at 25 health and then it goes down and we want it to be a little bit of a curve. So I right click and press the curve. So now if I move this down, of course it gets quieter. And then that means we have to connect it to the game later. And then it says our health bar, this will correlate directly to our health. So this is really cool. We can also do this with other parameters. Like for example, we could say, oh, we want to modulate the pitch. And we again go here, health bar. 
and then we can do the same if it's under 25. So I'm just going to select 25 here to make it accurate. We want to pitch it down by uh, minus 500. And then what we can do here again is I can bring in a heartbeat. And I'm just going to quickly look for heartbeat. Perfect and bring this into Ys. And I want to loop this sound, so I go to general settings and press loop, and then I'm gonna press save. I'm just gonna check, yeah, this looks good. And now um, I'm going to the RTPC tab again in here, and I'm going to say, okay, I wanna select the volume and health bar. And now what I want is we want it to be only audible when we go minus 25. So I have to bring this the opposite direction. So I don't want to hear it at 100. And I only want to hear start hearing it when it's at 25. So now there we go. And this is really cool. And, and you can do this with a bunch of different things. So for example, if we say, okay, we want all of our combat sounds to be low past when we get low health, we can do this on here. So we can go to the bus, for example, and we can say, okay, we want to now low pass filter everything. And we want it to do to the health bar and again, 100 health to zero health. And then we select a little bit here. So then it will go up and it will low pass it. But of course, we have to play the sounds that are in our combat bus. <laughs> So this is working and now you can see that you can automate things on buses or on the sounds or on guns. So really all of this stuff, it seems like so many different settings and it really feels overwhelming now I'm sure. But what's cool is really that this pretty much stays the same on whatever you click. So yeah, we can do a lot of cool things with RTPCs and I just wanted to go back again here because now we can see a volume here and it says RTPC. So you can hover on top of things and then it will say what it is. And so we can see here there's state, RTPC and link on link. So this is really the interesting one right now is the RTPC. So we can, if we double click that, we get to our volume RTPC here. So if I add a low pass, oops, a low pass. Now I'm going to in here and as you can see, yep, we've got an RTPC set up here. We can also alternatively just click on this double click and then we get to our RTPCs. So this is pretty useful. Then the last thing is states and that's something where we'll go into it in the future, but states essentially we can change a lot of different things through a sim single state. So what we could do, for example, is say you have a character and the character goes underwater. We can then have a state switch going from above water to or default to underwater. And then we could, for example, change the um, change the the mix so we can say, OK, all of the sounds now get low passed and you know, we want to we want to hear some bubble effects and maybe we want to put some reverb on everything and stuff like that. So this is where where states come in. And the advanced settings are basically some specific playback things where you can set playback limits. So, for example, we can say we want to limit the sound instances to maybe five or four. So if you have tons of um, enemies and they all are shooting guns, we can say, okay, we only ever want to hear four. And then this means four in the entire game at any given moment or per game object. So if there's an enemy that has 10 guns of the same machine gun on each arm, <laughs> then we can say we, we only want to hear four. And per game object, that means kind of whatever it's on versus globally across the entire game. And then we can say here, we want to kill the voice. So we want to shut it off or um, we want to use it virtually, which again, you can you can read here what exactly it does. But 
don't worry too much for now. These are the kind of things that you then get to during the mixing process. Similar to the vir virtual voice, which again, it's memory saving stuff, which we'll go into another time. And then the last thing is the playback priority. So that is how high is the priority of this. So if we have got lots of stuff playing, we could say we really, we want this to be high priority. Um, so this is a sound that always has to play versus, you know, this is something that's not that important. So if we have dialogue, for example, dialogue will be really high priority in like a story game or something. So then we can make sure that it doesn't get uh, killed off by one of our um, voice limitation settings here. So that's kind of what that is useful for. Um, and yeah, and then you, you have some other stuff like metadata and HDR mix with plugin MIDI, but these are kind of things where you can customize your, your own set and you can see, you can add some metadata in, in here, but you don't have to worry about these for the moment. These are all of the basics. So I've given you a bunch of theory right now. And then next time we'll jump more into the practice and we'll go step by step and make sure that we kind of use the things that we've been talking about today. But yeah, I hope this was really useful and thank you everyone for coming by. It was a pleasure and hope to see you all next time.